Hello, this is Evan Dogerson, and I'm Metagang here, and today we're going to go ahead and break down some of the responses from the official Q&A. I am going ahead and making this video covering the Q&As first because of a poll that I got on YouTube, and if you didn't see this, go ahead and make sure that you are subscribed, as subscribers are much more likely to see polls, and I will have the video analyzing the strategy at the Singapore event coming out soon. Um, I don't want to upload too many videos in a row, just because that kind of hurts the performance of all of them if they're competing with each other, but that video should be out for members sometime later today. Additionally, if you have other kinds of videos that you want to see me make, definitely go ahead and leave a comment about specifically what you want to see, as I do take those into consideration, and some of the videos I've made have been suggestions from other people. This is the first set of Q&As. I might go ahead and make some more videos covering down the later sets if this video does well, and if you want this video to do well, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe in order to please the YouTube algorithm. I'm not going to be covering every single Q&A here, because a lot of the ones are just like, the GDC changed the rule because they realized it was stupid. There were a bunch of ones regarding like expansion and some other ones with like SG-10. And uh, some of them are just like people asking questions that are very clearly in the game manual. And the GDC is just like, please read the usage guidelines. This is answered in the manual. So I'm just going to go through and break down the important Q&As that are actually going to like affect gameplay in some way, shape, or form. So let's go ahead and get into it. So the first one we have here involves a scenario in which you have the tube and a red robot's at one end of the tube and a blue robot's at one end of the tube and they're both pushing balls in and a robot gets tipped over because a ball pushes into the other robot and it gets tipped over and the GDC said this is perfectly fine if you're pushing on the tubes and a ball tips you over that's normal gameplay interaction and you're not going to be penalized at all for that so that's kind of the first one here so this one kind of covers what defines as open and what is closed and the interactions you can do with that and basically the key takeaway that is only the part of the long goals that are completely enclosed is considered closed for the purposes of rule SG-10. And every other part, even if it's only partially enclosed, is considered open. You are allowed to touch those balls and do whatever you want with them. So you can see here, like we have the goals. This is just from the Fusion 360 cap models. So that enclosed section up there, that is completely enclosed. You are not allowed to touch balls in there directly. However, anything out in this section right there or the entirety of the center goals, you're allowed to mess with. So I do think that you will see teams with mechanisms that can kind of like reach in and pull these balls out. As even if somebody's sitting at the end there, you could definitely get in there and pull out. And the same thing for all of these tubes right here. It's pretty exposed right there. So I definitely think you'll see teams with mechanisms that kind of reach in and can maneuver the balls around inside of those tubes. Now, the first part of this I've already covered in my game manual update video, which if you haven't already seen, that'll be up in the top right with regards to the balls being on the line, counting for both sides. But the second part is actually interesting, and I don't like it. So in, if you score in the center goal during the autonomous period, the red robot launches a ball through the goal, which pushes a blue block out, which kind of sucks, because for autonomous win point, you need blocks in three goals. The two long goals you can put blocks in, and they're safe. As long as they're in these open sections here, the other team isn't allowed to interact with them. They're considered safe. For the long goals that's per sg7 i believe so if you put your balls here and they go and descore them that's going to be a violation for them however in the center goals since they're all open all the way through and there's no center block in the middle if i'm a red robot and i put a ball inside there blue can come along and push my ball out which sucks for autonomous win point because in order to get the autonomous win point you need blocks scored in three goals and you only have two long goals which means if you score a block in the center goal you could have the autonomous win point. You've completed all the tasks. And then the other team goes and descores, and you lose the autonomous win point, which kind of sucks. I don't think that the other team should be able to do something that stops you from getting AWP. So I don't like this. So it probably means realistically what you're going to see is teams are parking down at the end of these goals at the end in order to stop their blocks from being pushed out. As if you push out two blocks, even if they push one block into you and it's still not scored, you still at least have one block inside the tube that's going to count. Or you could do something where you put your blocks in and then drive away at the last second if you're only able to get one or you need those extra three points. But overall, I don't really like this as it's going to lead to teams getting the AWP and then losing it because of something the opposition does, which isn't really how the game is being played in the past. It doesn't really matter what your opponents do. I think as long as you're good enough, you should get the AWP. This next one involves the 12-piece plastic limit. So if you have 12 pieces of plastic on your robot, one of them snaps during the match. Now you have 13 pl pieces of plastic on your robot. What do you do? Because if you're found to not be passing inspection at the end of a match, you're supposed to receive a disqualification for that match. So in this case scenario, you do get a little bit of exception. If your plastic breaks mid-match, you just have to replace it before the next match, um, which seems pretty reasonable. Just I would recommend any piece of plastic that you think have even have a chance of breaking, make sure you have spares. 
you will have to potentially make repairs mid-tournament if a piece of plastic breaks on you. Next up is something that I actually missed in the game manual update yesterday, as it wasn't in any of their change logs. So this question was regard to the game manual used to say each long goal can hold up to 15 blocks and each center goal can hold up to 7 blocks. However, you could fit more in. That's a goal with, I believe, 16 blocks in it. And basically the answer was the GDC just removed the limit. So you can see this is the old definition. Um, and then the newer definition, that's just gone. So you can fit 16 blocks in the long goal. You can fit 8 blocks in the center goals. So you're allowed to just have as many blocks in as it will fit. And then for the purpose of robot skills, this also was added into the manual. In order to be considered, you in order to get the control bonus, you have to have the zone full. So for that long goal, you still have to have three blocks in the control zone. And then for the center goals, you have to get seven blocks in order to be considered filled for the purposes of skills. However, you can still put eight in and it will count as being scored, which I guess kind of makes skills a little bit harder to max, which is probably really good because you might have to be struggling to try and fit those extra blocks in, which I think could be kind of interesting as stuffing the goal is probably something that you're going to want to do for skills. Previously, I definitely think that skills was going to be something that was going to be maxed because there were more balls on the field than there were spots in the goal. So as long as you scored every single spot in the goal, you were going to max out skills. But now that's going to be significantly harder to do as you're going to want to try and just squeeze the goals full as much as possible to get those extra three points. So I think this will make skills much harder to max, especially for programming, given you'll have to be super consistent to try and get the blocks in. And of course, this just seems like the simplest way is to get rid of the restriction amounts as you don't end up with scenarios where weird things happen. So overall, a good change, I think. Now, moving on to the Vexed U Q&As. Uh, this is a very sad Q&A. Air Blast is illegal now. You cannot use Air Blast to push all the blocks out. It was briefly legal for a couple of hours, as they did say that it, they changed it in the game manual update from directly affecting to touching for the blocks in the center protected area. However, now air blast is just completely not legal, so you can't get an air tank and blast all the balls out. Next up, in saying this though, when they referenced Q&A World 26 and the red box in it saying it affects it, that says you're limited to two air tanks. However, the GDC quickly corrected it, um, saying that VEXU teams are allowed to use more than two air tanks, and that'll be fixed in the next manual update. And finally, just a quick clarification for VEXU 24-inch robot expansion. It's basically the same as with VRC, except it's 24 instead of 22. That kind of wraps up everything from this Q&A session that was important. If you did like this video, be sure to please the algorithm. That way I know that you liked it, and I'll continue to make more of these. I will see you in the next one.